Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a little bit of a pause and just discussing everything that we've done in the previous videos. Okay, so so far we've looked at um, limits, right? And then we moved on to differentiation by first principle. And then yesterday we looked at the rules of differentiation, right? So I wanted to take a little bit of a pause and just look at a past exam paper just to consolidate everything that we've done, right? So in today's video, we're going to be looking at question seven from November 2019, right? And the first question says that we need to determine if prime of x, right, from first principles, if it is given that f of x is equal to 4 minus 7x, okay? Now, the instruction from first principle is basically telling us to use our definition of a derivative function, right? So namely, the fact that if prime of x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, okay? So we have our f of x function, okay? Our task is to determine our f of x plus h function, right? So f of x plus h simply just means that go to your original function of f, Wherever you see an x, we're going to substitute x plus h, right? So this will then give us our f of x plus h function to be 4 minus 7 into x plus h, right? We'll then distribute that minus 7 into the brackets and that will give us 4 minus 7x minus 7h, right? So now we have our two components that are ready to be substituted into our f prime formula, okay? So we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of 4 minus 7x minus 7h minus, right, in brackets, f of x, right, and f of x is 4 minus 7x, okay. We then distribute this minus 7 into the brackets, right. So we're going to have the limit as h tends to 0 of 4 minus 7x minus 7h minus 4 plus 7x or divided by h, okay? So the positive 4 and the minus 4 will cancel each other out and our minus 7x and positive 7x will also cancel each other out. So in our numerator we are left with just simply a minus 7h, okay? So this leaves us to evaluate the limit as h tends to 0 of minus 7h divided by h, right? So our h's simply just cancel each other out. And in this case, notice that we don't even need the step of substituting h is equal to 0 because we don't even have an h anymore, okay? So f prime of x is equal to minus 7, right? And you can confirm this using um, the rules of differentiation because you now know the rules of differentiation, okay? So if you confirm this, if you go to your function f of x, right, you'll see that your first term is a constant term of 4, right? And the derivative of that is 0, right? The second term is mine is 7x right okay so the derivative of that is simply going to be well 7 times 1 times x to the exponent 1 minus 1 which is x to the exponent 0 and anything to the exponent 0 is 1 right so we're going to have that f prime of x is equal to 0 minus 7 times 1 which is just minus 7 okay now if you review back to the first video where we did the introduction to differential calculus, right? In that video, right at the end, I pointed out to you guys that you should note that when you have a cubic function and you take the derivative of that, you're going to get a quadratic function. And when you have a quadratic function and you take the derivative of that, you're going to get a linear function. Now we see that when you have a linear function and you take the derivative of that, you get a constant function, right? And this is because, well, a linear function has a constant gradient all throughout its line okay so when we are talking about the derivative we are talking about the gradient of tangent lines along the curve at any given point okay so because the gradient of tangent lines along a linear function is always constant right the derivative of a linear function is a constant function okay that's just something to take note of right now question 7.2, they say determine dy by dx if y is equal to 4 times x to the exponent 8 plus the square root of x cubed. Right? Now with this type of question, we know that 
we immediately have to use our rules of differentiation because there is no instruction of differentiation from first principle. Okay. When we want to use our rules of differentiation, we need to make sure that all our terms are in the form a times n times x to the exponent n so that we can apply the power rule. Okay. Right. Um, in this case, we see that our second term is a radical, right? So we're going to have to transform that by rewriting it as x to the exponent 3 over 2, right? So we'll have y is equal to 4 times x to the exponent 8 plus x to the exponent 3 over 2, okay? So then taking the derivative function, we'll have dy by dx, right, is equal to 4 times 8 times x to the exponent 8 minus 1 plus 3 over 2 times 1 times x to the exponent 3 over 2 minus 1. Okay, this will then give us 4 times 8 is 32 times x to the exponent 7 plus 3 over 2 times x to the exponent 1 half. Okay, we can then just clean this up and rewrite it as 32 times x to the exponent 7 plus 3 times the square root of x divided by 2. Okay. Right, now let's move on to question 7.3. Right, question 7.3, they say that you are given that y is equal to a times x squared plus b. Right, 7.3.1, we need to determine dy by dx. Okay, so this is just simply applying the power rule. We are looking for the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x. Okay, very simple, like usual. We're going to have a times 2 times x to the exponent 2 minus 1 plus, well, the derivative of a, a is a constant, so that's just 0. So that's just plus 0, okay? So dy by dx is equals to 2 times a times x to the exponent 1, right? Or just simply 2ax, okay? Now, question 7.3.2 uh, is asking us to find dy by dA, okay? Now note the difference between 7.3.1 and 7.3.2. In 7.3.1, we were finding the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x. Now we want to find the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable a. Okay. This can throw you off a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily have to. right? So one way that we can overcome making a mistake is we can go to our original function y is equals to a times x squared plus a and put a box around x squared right and let's call x squared k right so k just represents some variable okay um you could have called k3 in the back of your mind as well if that helps okay so now you concentrate on your variable which is told to you it has to be a right so the exponents on both your variable a right is one right so you then go on and you apply the power rule okay so we're going to have dy by dA is equals to one times k times a to the exponent one minus one plus one times one times a to the exponent one minus one right now let's reverse the substitution of k is equals to x squared right this is then going to give us dy by dA is equals to, well, 1 times k is just going to be x squared times a to the exponent 1 minus 1 is 0 plus 1 times 1 is 1 times a to the exponent 1 minus 1 is an exponent of 0, right? And anything to the exponent of 0 is 1, okay? So this is just simply dy by dA is equals to x squared plus 1, right? So there you go. That is the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable a. Okay. Now, question 7.4, we're not going to solve in this video, right? But we'll solve it in the next video, right? In this video, I'm just going to set the question up, right? So the question says, um, the curve with the equation y is equals to x plus 12 over x passes through the point a with x coordinate 2, y coordinate b. Determine the equation of the line perpendicular to the tangent to the curve at a right so we are just going to set this question up quickly um, let's do this by getting ourselves a sketch right so we don't need to necessarily know what this function actually looks like we can just work with a generic sketch right so 
we draw ourselves a generic sketch and we know that in the sketch right we have to have a point a okay and this point a has a x coordinate of 2 y coordinate of b right at that point a we have a point of contact between the curve and the tangent line okay so let's draw ourselves a tangent line at a okay we know that our curve is defined by the equation y is equals to x plus 12 divided by x okay now it would be necessary for us to find firstly the gradient of our tangent line at x is equals to 2 right which means that we need to find dy by dx right because remember that the gradient of our tangent line right is equals to the derivative right of our function at that point right so dy by dx right is the derivative function and we're going to evaluate that at x is equals to 2 right which is going to give us the gradient of our tangent line at x is equals to 2 okay then once we have that we know that what we are looking for is the equation of a line which is perpendicular to this tangent line right so a line which is perpendicular to the tangent line will cross right or intersect right both the curve and the tangent line at our point a okay so it's going to look something like this right and we know that the product of the gradient sorry of two perpendicular lines is negative one right we now know that we've determined the gradient of our tangent line so the gradient of the tangent line times the gradient of this line that we are looking for must equal minus one right which means that we'll be able to calculate the gradient of our line right and then once we have that it's going to be necessary for us to find the value of b right well the value of b is just the corresponding y value at x is equal to 2 and we know the equation of our curve so that's just simply substituting 2 in to our given equation y is equal to x plus 12 divided by x okay so then a is then going to be a point that is going to define define sorry an x1 and a y1 for us right and then we can use the form famous um, straight line equation right which states that y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 right then when we look at this equation we see that we have a y1 we have the gradient of our line and we have an x1 right so then we'll be able to find the equation of our line right so that's just me just setting up the question um, we'll deal with this question in the next video you can even try the question yourself in the meanwhile and then we'll compare our answers in the next video see you next time